happy Friday everyone. Hope you're doing well and have had a good week and are looking forward to your weekend. I'm doing all right myself and uh, don't know what I'm doing this weekend, but I'm sure I'll probably have some fun. Anyway, let's uh, hear a short story and then listen to some backstories. If you have a friend who's up to scratch, he must be fit as a fiddle. In that case, he's likely worth his salt and also likely a fine dude. But I won't beat around the bush. If he is that fine a fellow, I lift my glass to him and say, Here's mud in your eye. Well, if you were listening, you probably recognized a few cliches in there, or phrases that are common to the English language. And uh, today we're going to look at where some of those came from. And the first one in the story was, or the paragraph was, up to scratch. You ever wonder what that means? Is, is your work up to scratch? Well, let's have a look and see what that, where that came from, shall we? The expression comes from prize fighting. At one time, a lime was scratched in the ground with a toe, and the fighters had to come up to it, but neither could go beyond it. So one who wished to default just failed to come up to scratch. The practice of scratching the line in the ground is followed by many young boys to this day. So that's also where the phrase toe the line comes from. To come up, put your toe on the line and draw the line with your toe. So there you go. If you're up to scratch, it means you're up to the line and you're ready to fight. And the next little saying is, if your friend is up to scratch, he must be fit as a fiddle. fiddle. Well, did you ever wonder where that came from? Let's have a look, shall we? Being fit as a fiddle, the phrase originally was fit as a fiddler. Not a fiddle, but a fiddler, and referred to the stamina of fiddlers who could play for a dance all night long without ever getting tired. So if you're fit as a fiddler, it means you have really good stamina. And I said that if he was up to scratch and fit as a fiddle, then he was worth his salt. Where does that come from? Well, that's a really ancient saying. It goes back to the days of the Roman Empire. Back in those days, salt was a very valuable and highly prized commodity. And quite often the Roman soldiers in the legions were paid in salt. So a good soldier was worth his salt. And that's where the phrase comes from. If you want to be worth your salt, it means you do a good job. All right. Then I said if he was worth his salt, fit as a fiddle and up to scratch, he was likely a fine dude. Well, we've heard that term, haven't we? Part of it goes back to the Old West. We had dude, dude ranches. And now it tends to be more a thing of, hey, you know, we think of a surfer boy and, hey, dude, what's up? Well, what does it mean? Let's have a look. Duds are our clothes from the Middle English word dude, which means to dress. The Easterner who goes west dresses himself in fancy duds, and to the Westerner seems to pose or strike an attitude. The word dude is dud combined with the word attitude. So it means somebody who wears their fancy clothes with an attitude. So if somebody calls you a dude, they're saying you're dressed awfully nice and you have an attitude. Now, <laughs> whether it's a good attitude or a bad attitude, that's up to you. Alrighty. But I won't beat around the bush. Well, there's another one. You've probably heard that one. Don't beat around the bush. Politicians are good at beating around the bush. Well, let's have a look at that one, shall we? In many forms of hunting, it's necessary, in order to find the game, to follow it into the underbrush, beating the bushes and making a din to scare the animals out. A person afraid of the animals lurking there will beat about the bush, pretending to go in to find and kill the beast, but not actually doing so. So if you're a true hunter, you just go into the bush and beat it. If you're a fake hunter, and don't want to face up to your responsibilities, you beat about the bush and don't do what you're really called to do. All right. So I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm going to raise my glass to him and say, here's mud in your eye. And where does that come from? Well, mud in your eye comes from horse racing. Because if you are the winning horse, you're the horse in the lead on a muddy track, if you've ever watched a horse galloping around a, a track and it's a little bit muddy or wet, you'll notice that dirt and mud fly up off their hooves. And if you're in second place or third place behind that fellow, you're likely to get mud in your eye. 
So here's mud in your eye is actually a toast to the person who's giving the toast, who's saying, I hope I beat you, that you're behind me and my horse throws mud in your eye. So there you go, that's where these sayings came from. Alrighty, now you probably think you deserve a groaner. Yeah, you do. I'll give you a groaner. There was a young college student who was majoring in zoology, and he took a class on the zoology of birds, the biology and zoology of birds. And he studied hard and applied himself all through the course and did well on the quizzes and the little tests. And the day was coming for the final exam. Well, the young fellow wanted to make sure he aced the exam, so he studied all night. He stayed up all night, drank coffee, and just did everything he could to prepare. And the next day, when he walked into the classroom, there was a table at the front. And all that was on the table were 12 little stands with pairs of bird legs on them. And the professor handed out a paper to each person and said, in order to pass the final exam, you have to identify the bird that belongs to each set of legs. Well, a student looked at them and they all looked alike. The bird legs did not look any different one from another. And the more he thought about it, the angrier he got. And the angrier he got, the more he steamed and thought, I spent all night on this. And this is a stupid exam. This is the final exam. Well, he got so mad, he stormed up to the professor's desk, threw the paper at the professor and said, this is stupid. I spent all term studying and breaking my back and sweating over, over learning all the stuff you gave us. And this is what you give us for a final exam? A bunch of bird legs that all look alike and you expect us to identify what kind of bird is which is which from the legs? I'm out of here. And he went storming off and there's like 300 students in the class and as the young student approached the door, the professor suddenly realized that he had no idea who this young fellow was. So he yelled after the young student, you, what's your name? Well, the student was so mad, he turned around, pulled his pant legs up and said, you guess. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was pretty bad. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and uh, we'll see you on Tuesday for Tuesdays with the Pilgrim. Until then, here's mud in your eye. Take care, stay safe, have a great weekend, and God bless.